Welcome to the Werewolf Den, where we delve into gaming concepts behind White Wolf's Werewolf the Apocalypse. I'm Amelin. And I'm Ryan. Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about, like I mentioned, our first big heritage tribe, the Fianna. And because it's 2020 and not 1920, I think it's a lot easier to talk about. The Fianna are the big Irish or Gaelic heritage tribe. The books really focus on Ireland, but technically it's all of the, the British Isles with sort of that Celtic culture and heritage. And yeah, because it's not 1920, a lot of these stereotypes of the Irish are viewed as sort of tongue-in-cheek. They're joked about with perhaps a good-hearted nature. There's St. Patrick's Day, which really embraces it. So this idea of the rowdy drunkard, the fun-loving Irish storyteller, is sort of where the stereotype hits the tribe. And yeah, like we've sort of said with previous tribes, we want to try and open this up in new directions. And I think Fianna is a great tribe to do this with. One of the big things that players will very frequently try to tell new players when somebody's trying to select their tribe and they're giving like the stereotypes of the tribe is they'll say that the Fianna are like D&D bards. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Which they're not. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, D&D bards are their own thing, and maybe that's a whole nother podcast. But I think the best way to sort of conceptualize the Fianna is as cultural powerhouses. A lot of the words, the terminology that you find in Werewolf the Apocalypse comes from the Irish language and Irish history. I mean, their very tribe name, the Fianna, comes from the story of the Fianna. Fomorians, the, the worm-tainted agents that werewolves often come in conflict with. Again, coming from Irish folklore. A lot of the very concept of Garu culture comes from the Fianna. And I think that's a really good way to sort of analyze them. They are the cultural powerhouse. They've sort of set the stage for, you know, the very language that the Garu use. And that colors and informs the way that the nation as a whole perceives their cause and their opponents. And one of the things with the whole getting away from Ireland, but still keeping the Fianna as like your cultural powerhouse then, is the way that you should look at the Fianna is less D&D &D bard and more your cultural historian. Yeah. The Fianna, no matter where they are, should be kind of like that wise man that tells you stories of great heroes past, that person that always has a fable or an anecdote for every situation that you come across. This more effectively fits the Fianna than just, I sing a song and everybody feels better. Right. You, you don't need to play an instrument to be a Fianna. But yeah, so looking at it from that lens, there's a lot of room to sort of invent a very unique character. And Galliard is easily the most iconic auspice within the tribe, and the books state this. You know, the greatest Galliards have come from the Fianna, and again, that sort of makes sense considering how the very lexicon is informed by the tribe. But there's a lot of room to take this in any auspice direction and make it very, very interesting as a result. Mm -hmm. Another. Uh, oh. No, no, it's fine. Like, the best example I always like to give folk, and with the background history lore in the books, some people might take issue with this, and I can understand why, but as part of the whole let's break the cultural boundaries of the various tribes, particularly the white-dominated tribes, mm -hmm. I feel like this is a good way to do this. I mentioned before how Coyote is an excellent example of a Ragabash. I kind of feel like he's an ex excellent example of a Fianna Ragabash. Coyote is very jubilant with his tricks. Coyote wants you to kind of come in and learn these lessons. Coyote wants to inform and guide you just as well as being jubilant and very happy with their tricks. And that's, I feel like, 
is an excellent cultural example that is not based in a white culture for a Fianna Ragabash. And you can find examples like this throughout anywhere. Oh, so like, if you've read the Black Panther comics from Marvel, there's a secondary character named Changamayer, who is this scholar within Wakanda, who's, you know, all up on political philosophy and culture. But I think he'd make a great Fianna Ragabash because he is very concerned about the situation of a monarchy within Wakanda. And so he's raising all of these questions and he's very confrontational with T'Challa over this political perspective. And I think that would make a great Fianna Ragabash. So... Yeah, there's so many ways to sort of move in this direction and get away from the oversaturation of, like you said, the The D&D bard, the drunken, frivolous Irish. Yeah, to break that cultural affiliation without doing any harm to the culture, obviously, like you mentioned, Mm -hmm. and really explore this concept in a broader sense. So amongst the other things that the Fianna are known for within the book is having heritage and background connections with the Fae. And again, there's definitely that whole Irish aspect with it. A lot of our folk tales regarding Fae creatures stem from the idea of the She of Ireland or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, and I've actually had somebody tell me that you can't break the cultural barriers of the Fianna simply because of this Fae aspect to it to which then i respond there's face stories all over the world yeah uh mothman could be seen from the perspective of the fae as this weird mercurial uh you know creature out in the woods that no one can understand and has this alien mindset and is very mysterious mothman fits within that sense and since the fiana have strong ties to the appalachian region heritage wise i think that would be a really awesome way to move in that direction i want someone who is all about mothman in a tribe i want shangamire and i want the mothman fiana 2020 needs these things but uh yeah the tribal totem of stag is also another way to sort of explore this and whereas the other totems that we've talked about i think have a very cohesive concept stag is much like the fey very mercurial there's a lot of things going on with stag and they don't quite make a fully composed philosophical picture there's aspects of the great hunt there's aspects of sort of anachronistic oh crap what's the word manliness masculinity Masculinity. of anachronistic masculinity of the wilds of the fey there's there's so many sort of things playing into stag that it makes it hard to sort of describe Mm -hmm. the totemic spirit but that gives you a lot of options to sort of cleave to because again the spirit is basically aligning itself with you you are a member of that tribe there's something that the spirit sees in you that has an affinity with and so you can look at all of these different things and move in that direction one of the big things i always try to tell new players who are considering trying to find a tribe and it's like like everything else feels a little maybe too tied down or a little too rigid in its thought process, I kind of want to direct them towards the Fianna then. Particularly if they want to play a character that's either prideful or jubilant. And hedonistic is something that I recommend, but I understand like wanting to push away from the drunk thing. You can be hedonistic without being drunk. Yes. The Fianna cleave to a lot of highs and lows. Mm -hmm. Back in the days when there were tribal disadvantages, that was sort of the problem. They're very manic depressive. And it fits with that cultural icon stereotype, right? They know and have memorized the stories and tales of the best of times, but they also understand the opposite of that, the worst. Mm -hmm. And so they ride within those two extremes. It's one of those things where they are the perfect tribe for it's like, I have an idealization of what the world should be like, but I also just understand what the world is Mm -hmm. and having to deal with the emotional complexity of that. I very frequently talk about how Fianna are kind of the tribe of self-care in a sense. In a bit, yeah. How, you know, perhaps more than any other tribe, they are the most aware that the war is not going well because they're remembering these stories and tales. And so canonically, that's where a lot of the alcoholism comes from, that, you know, as the cultural figurehead, 
you're painfully aware that this is a losing battle, but it's a battle that needs to be fought. Mm -hmm. And sort of that inevitability, that sword hanging over your head, drives you into depression. So it's one of those things where the Fianna is a great tribe to play if you want to play that character who is willing to realize things are getting really dark, they're getting really serious, Let's take a moment to take a breather and have a soft role play session. Let's mm -hmm. take a moment to like do something completely different. Yeah. I am stressed from that last battle. Let's let's take a vacay kind mm -hmm. of thing. The Fianna, uh, largely again through Stag, also have a very strong concept of sort of the chain of being or the ecological system as it relates to prey and predator that I think is very fascinating. So Stag is a figurehead of the Great Hunt, is also just a figurehead of hunting in general. And one of his big things is that you must always be respectful to prey. And so I think there's a lot of room to sort of explore this. I would love to see, you know, in, a, in addition to the two that I've already mentioned, like a Jainist Fianna, uh, who is aware of, you know, their place within the ecosystem as sort of this apex predator, but also understands the impact that that can have. Mm -hmm. uh, and so spiritually performs, you know, a prayer for the prey every time, but within the material, they're also very concerned, you know, not to step on any insects as they're walking around, wear a cloth over their face so they don't breathe in microbes and let their immune system kill them kind of thing. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to explore the Fianna once you sort of divorce yourself from this, they're the Irish tribe concept. The other big thing with the Fianna that plays in really well with everything else is the concept of the Garu culture is a culture of oral history. Yes. And the Fianna embody that sense better than any other tribe. Mm -hmm. The Fianna are said to be, we mentioned before how they're the keepers of those folk tales, they're the keepers of those anecdotes and stuff like that. These are all oral traditions. Somebody telling you those jokes, somebody telling you this old folk tale is an oral tradition. And this is where that power comes from and the ability to sort of color your character with unique cultures. Mm -hmm. Because there is a written record known as the Silver Record of the greatest and the best stories and tales, but that is only a tiny tip of the iceberg that is the entire culture of the Garu. And so you can play a Fianna who is exposed to you know, a certain oral tradition, mm -hmm. which has a different take on any aspect of Garu culture in this game. And not only can you sort of inform the game through that perspective, you can inform it from your own because you are telling these stories. They're changing and shifting as they pass from tale teller to tale teller. The best Fianna players I always come across are the ones that are willing to make up stories on the spot to tell. And that can make it very difficult. You have to, again, much like with the Children of Gaia, you have to understand a bit of the game itself in order to have fair footing to engage in that direction. But yeah, you need to have the, the chops to actually get up there and, you know, with some degree of confidence, spin these new stories. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, this tribe allows you to sort of set the cultural narrative and really kind of inform the game as a whole from that perspective, both on a LARP and a tabletop, which I think is very interesting. So yeah, if you want to play a character with a lot of possibility for monologuing, if you want to play a character who is like very grandiose and larger than life, if you want to play a character who puts on like this great like mask of some sort of facade, but definitely has like a more complicated, like dark past. Or, or if you just want to be in a sandbox with an unlimited amount of toys to sort of play with. Yeah, that's the Fianna for you. The mm -hmm. Fianna, if you are a player that loves to improvise, that loves to perform, the Fianna are, you can't go wrong with the Fianna. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't like performing, that still makes a great Fianna. You know, be that like survivalist woodsman who's out hunting for Mothman, who, who can't tell a story very well because they're kind of isolated up in the Appalachians. Like, yes, be a Fianna who does not have any dots of performer expression. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> just remember those key themes. And again, find a reason why you would be in this tribe. Don't just play against type to 
play, play against type. type. Sure. Yeah. There's, uh, Explore there, the type. There's a di- difference between subversion and deconstruction. I am very much for deconstruction with subversion informing the deconstruction. If you are just subverting a tribe for subverting a tribe, why are you in the tribe? Yeah. Which we covered with black theories. Right. Who are the most likely to be inflicted with that wound. Yeah. Subversion without deconstruction is pointless. Deconstruction with subversion, excellent. Yep. So yeah, I hope that helps you when it comes to exploring this tribe and considering ways to do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think to kind of sum things up, because we were a little all over the place because the Fianna are all over the place. It's fitting. But yeah, things to kind of keep in mind when going into the idea of playing a Fianna. You don't have to be a drunk. They are kind of the tribe of manic depressives that understand the need for self-care. <laughs> it's a good way to kind of look at them. And they're a tribe that enjoys lore, history, culture. and culture, and just exploration of new ideas is an excellent way to kind of think of the Fianna. Mm-hmm. You can very easily build a Thayer Fianna that's all about digging up like new and interesting things, learning about the cultures that are of the other tribes. That is an excellent thing to deal with with the Fianna. And with that, I think we've mostly pretty well covered them. Mm -hmm. So so. we'll go ahead and leave you with that. And then we'll see you next time for... Another big heritage tribe and one that has a lot lot of controversy. And a lot of baggage to unpack. Yes. But a lot of good to discuss with it as well. Mm-hmm. The Geta Fenris. That's the name. Yes. Gonna... <laughs> Some tribe with all of these qualities. See you next, next time. time. <laughs> Have a good one.